The current state of global oceans is deteriorating. There is overheating of oceans, there is coral bleaching, there is overfishing and illegal fishing, as well as introductions of plastics into our oceans. This is basically how temperatures have changed over time. So looking from 2004 onwards, we can see that as the time pans over, you start to see the increase in frequency and intensity of warming oceans here. That's actually impacting coral reef ecosystems, mangrove ecosystems and seagrass ecosystems as well. Coral reefs are incredibly important ecosystems. They also support about 25% of the marine mammal species that we know of today. Seawater temperatures increase and that increase in seawater temperature actually causes the first global bleaching event that was recorded. And in this first event, 16% of the corals were killed across the globe. And not just that, actually moving ahead of time is the most recent global bleaching event which started actually in 2015. And what's very shocking about that event is that it lasted for almost two and a half years and it only very recently probably concluded like just a, a month ago. These issues are actually very tightly close to our stomach, I would say, because that's where most of our favourite seafood comes from. But more than just that, not just food, but also raw materials, the potential for discovering new medicine and new materials, bio-inspired materials, tourism, job creation, as well as natural buffers against like natural disasters such as tsunami. As populations grow bigger, it's actually putting a lot of pressures on our oceans in terms of overfishing. One of the things that's happening in the past decade or so is the increase and rapid extraction of seafood from the oceans. Perhaps the, there are also other ways to overcome the problems which is by introducing fishing quota. So that's an example of catch shares where it basically controls the amount of seafood as, as well as the methods of harvesting this seafood. But one of the really good examples is like the nation of Palau being very committed to actually protecting their ocean resources to create better surveillance and enforcement in their area. They've worked with Global Fishing Watch. What they've done is that they've used the data and identified an illegal fishing vessel and actually went ahead to actually arrest the fishing vessel. And what they did was they made sure that the fishermen were safe and they burned the boat. It is really a sign of, of, of commitment towards combating illegal fishing. In order to better protect ocean ecosystems, there needs to be a cooperation. There would be the efforts that comes from the local community, the governance, as well as private partners to actually play a role in protecting the ocean ecosystems. As individuals, I believe that each of us can make a difference to protect our ocean ecosystems. No matter how small the contribution is, at least you're making a difference to help make this ocean ecosystem better. Some of these examples can be about making wise decisions about your consumption of seafood, as well as uh, preventing marine litter from going into the oceans. And finally, actually volunteering your time to participate in meaningful events that helps to clean up our oceans.